You know what? Honestly, honestly, actually, before Kvodo, if you could tell us, if you could tell us, can it get worse than this? Anyone, if you want to ask if it can get worse than this, you should ask him. Ask him what he saw 70 years ago. This is Gan Eden, what we live right now. Right now, what we live, this life that we're living in is like Gan Eden. Our biggest problem is the air conditioner doesn't work. Or we don't have a lot of money. Or something like that. But what they lived, what he lived 70 years ago, that's, that's Tikkun. Thank you very much, Mamash. Thank you now, but uh, people, but you know, people, I wonder why you, you hear me, right? Hashem. No, no, no. No, Hashem. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, You know, Hashem says, it's here. You know what? I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Baruch Hashem, what happened today in the shul, you guys don't even understand what just happened. This shul wasn't supposed to happen, Bechal. It's Monday. We don't have shuls on Monday. We don't have shuls on Monday. To get to a shul on Tuesday and Wednesday is already, I have, the whole world has to like collapse in order for me to make it to the shul. So to have it on a new day, it's mamash. The Satan gets up off his chair and beats me up all day just to survive to get to the shul. If I tell you just what happens to me on a daily basis to get to a shul, you guys would say, why do you even do it, Bechlal? But that's not the point. I understand now why this year happened. It has everything to do with what you're saying. You're saying, how much worse can it get? Right? No, it's not, it's not. So let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. You see, Hashem Barach is very kind with us. And He likes to give us Support likes to give us a push here and there. When you're doing good, he likes to give you a push. When you're doing bad, nothing happens. Well, sometimes you get punished. So, Baruch Hashem, these last several months, we've had an extraordinary amount of Siat Bishmaya. Torah, Baruch Hashem, a lot of Chidushim. The uh, organization, Bezat Hashem, growing leaps and bounds. What other organization invested millions and millions of dollars in, we're either getting it for nothing or we're getting it for such a price that we could actually afford, which is pennies. Because we're not so big as far as financials, but whatever, we're doing what we can. We have movies that big organizations are asking us, asking me how many people I have on my staff to make these movies. There's a new movie coming out tomorrow night. Part three of Torah and Science and uh, Ancient Wisdom. It's the best part out of the three, by the way. The first two are amazing. Part three is better than both. It's amazing. It's much amazing. Phenomenal production. So months in the making. We have another movie that's also probably about two weeks away, one week away from being finished. And a few others. We have a TV station that's going to go live very soon. We have uh, a lot of amazing things. A few books and so on. Tachlis is, how do you know it's working? How do you know it's working? So once in a while, Hashem sends you a gift and He says, listen, letters come in. I started watching Yeshurim. I keep Shabbat. I started watching Yeshurim. I kept Yom Kippur. I started watching Shurim. I took off the wig. One woman, Baruch Hashem, uh, just two weeks, right before Shana, says, I bought a wig. A day later, after I bought a wig for, very, for thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars, I saw your shoe about wigs. The wig is in the garbage right now. Now this is a person that's wore wigs her whole life. It's not like she's the first wig. Whole life she's wearing wigs. She saw a shoe, said, I know it's true. I know it's true. It's hard for me. It's hard for my husband. But I know it's true. 
wig goes in the garbage. So you're seeing siyat dishma, you're seeing Hamash, this result every day, Baruch Hashem. But you ask the question, how much worse can it be? Sinners we have. Plenty of sinners, unfortunately. The chidush we got today from Rabbi Ephraim and the Zohar Kadosh was that at the end of times, I don't know if you were here yet, but at the end of times we're going to run, we're going to make so many sins that we're going to lose all of our schutavot. Any merits that our, our forefathers have that we're still surviving on will run out. Run out. Meaning, we won't go from trouble to disaster. So you asked, how much worse can it get? Now I have people that watch the Shurim, all parts of the world. Tahiti, Australia, Israel, all over the U.S., U.K., Hasidic people, Ashkenazi, Sephardic, religious, atheist. I actually even have a couple of people from Arab countries, from Abu Dhabi, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, Saudi Arabia. I think I have one guy. Uh, one guy in Afghanistan watches the Shurim. No, no, I actually have people that are much. They, sent, they, they even actually donated a few dollars too. It's unbelievable. Like you show, okay, watch the Shurim. Okay, maybe just somebody's like looking to assassinate me. But actually donating money, <laughs> donating money means they actually like the Shurim. So now you, people are from all kinds. But for the first time, today you got your answer live. You asked how much worse can it get, right? So Shem sent you a Holocaust survival. The tzaddik that just left the shiul, he's in mid-90, he's 94 years old. Apparently he's a big fan. I met his wife right before Rosh Hashanah. And she said, right when I moved to the community, she says, I can't believe I'm meeting you. We've been watching your shiurim. Blah, blah, blah. And then she says, my husband's very upset that I met you before him because he's even a bigger fan. So you asked, how much worse can it be? So Hashem sent you an answer. He sent you a Holocaust survivor. And the Holocaust is exactly, right before the Holocaust happened, it's exactly like today. Jews were in power. Jews were rich. Jews were in control. And Jews were anti-Torah. Intermarriage became normal, acceptable. Everything that's happening right now. You ask how much worse can it be? Should have asked him. Right now it's Gan Eden. That's why I do what I do. Somebody asked me on a holiday, says he's a fan, he watched Shurin, ta, 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 all the compliments that they give. I go, okay, to the point. He goes, listen, you can make, go back to Wall Street, go make money. Go make $50 million. Go make $100 million. Come back, do Kiruf. Maybe pay other people to do it. So I thought about this Mishnah. I said, let's say we listen to this guy. I go back to Wall Street and I go make money. But then this Mishnah came up. And the Mishnah says, if you fulfill the Torah, despite not having any money, despite being poor, despite not having a penny, despite not knowing how you're going to survive next month, next week, next day, eventually you'll have wealth. What kind of wealth? It could be material, it could be spiritual, it could be both. But if you neglect the Torah because you're chasing wealth, Eventually, you'll have poverty. So yes, I go back to Wall Street. Be like these guys. There's no doubt in my mind I can be on a Forbes 500 within a certain amount of time. No doubt. Skill set, I'm better than today than I was ever before. You have a clearer mind. You have, I'm healthier, Baruch Hashem. No questions asked. But then what's Amr Yisrael going to do? There's one less guy that's actually helping people do tshuva. There's not that many to begin with. I'm not the only guy. There's obviously other ones, there's Rabbi Zachi, there's a few others, Rabbi Lonava, there's Rabbi uh, 
um, Zitron, there's a few. But we still have 80% of Am Yisrael doesn't even keep Shabbat. Which means that whatever we have is definitely not enough. So to lower it by one more, so how much worse can it be? Much worse. That's, the, that's why we don't go back to Wall Street. That's why I don't care about money. That's why it's not some big gdula, not some big tzaddik, so big nothing. It's just the reality. What he lived, I dream about. That's what's possible. That's what's likely. And whoever's going to survive is the ones that actually listens to this Mishnah. Everybody else, it's a disaster. So everyone has an opportunity to invest. You can invest in your building. You can invest in your next house. You can invest in the next kitchen. You can invest in the next car. You get a second car and a third car, and maybe get your 16 year old kid car and get a bigger iPhone and a bigger iPad and a bigger this and a bigger that, and maybe some more magazine subscriptions so you can look at other people's money just in case they have more than you. But you can't take anything of it. You can't take any of it with you. Nothing happens. When we die, all that stuff dies with you, somebody else takes it. By the time you actually get to have all the stuff, you leave it to somebody else, and they don't want it. Or you can start investing your life to fulfill Torah. Time, use it for Torah. Money, use it for Torah. Why? It's the only thing that's going to protect you from not experiencing what he experienced. He saw firsthand, he was in the Holocaust. Somehow, this truth that he's hearing here, he says, this is what we need to hear. And what he said to me, what he said to me, right now in quiet, because was the scariest part. And he whispered to me in my ear, and he says, why so few people? Why so few people? You know why he said, why so few people? Because if there were more people listening to Rabbi Lel, Mikalmaya, Rav Wasserman, and all of the rebukers before the Holocaust, there wouldn't have been a Holocaust. He went through the Holocaust. He saw it. He know why. He knows why it happened. He didn't say one time when I mentioned the Holocaust is God did it. He didn't say no, no, no. He knows why it happened. He knows very well why it happened. And that's why he's asking, why so few people? Because if there was more before the Holocaust listening to the truth of Torah, there wouldn't have been a Holocaust. There wouldn't have been. There's two options in the days of Mashiach. Good way, bad way. Good way, everybody does tshuva. Bad way, gog magog. Disaster. Makes the uh, sages in the previous generations had a debate, discussion about different things, and they started talking about the end of times. They started saying about what's going to happen. They said, World War I, just happened. It was right after World War One. So World War One was the beginning. The next war is going to make World War One seem like a kindergarten game. Seem like child's play. That's what happened. World War Two made World War One seem like nothing. And he said that Gog and Magog is going to make World War Two seem like child's play. So. I asked the same question. Why so few people? Why so few people? Why are people still wondering, should I give $10 or should I save it for my IRA account? Should I donate the 1000 to the Bet Knesset so they could 
tell, oh, look, this guy bought an aliyah for a thousand, for five thousand, for fifty thousand. Or should I donate twenty dollars to go help somebody do tshuva? At the Bet Knesset, everybody has money. Everybody has money to buy aliyah during the holidays. Everybody has money. Even if you don't have money, you have money. You're going to buy an aliyah. Why? Because you want to show everybody else you have money. Contest. 500, 5,000, 5 this, 5 this. Everybody wants to show they have money. To save souls from going to the Holocaust, $20. Sorry it's so little. I have more next time. Why so few people? That's what he said. Why so few people? What happened? What happened? Where are they? They're donating in the Bit Knesset, kissing the Sefer Torah, and Hashem says, don't kiss me, just listen to me. So, next week, I don't know if we're going to do a shiur on uh, Sunday or Monday, because it's Chag Tuesday and Wednesday, but Hashem, I'll try to do my best to do a shiur, probably most likely Monday. If we do a shiur on Monday, Bezat Hashem, Mamash, it's going to be a big, big messy wooden effort to get it done. If we do a shiur Monday, I want each one of you to do everything you possibly can. If you have to beg, beg. Bring at least one, two, three, four, five people with you. Why? I don't want to hear what he said again. I don't want to hear why so few people. Because he knows. He saw it. I just dream it. You understand? When the guy saw gay and Noam tells you what it looks like, you start listening. You understand? Any questions? Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.